Near Bethlehem did shepherds keep their flocks of lambs and feeding sheep, to whom God angel did appear, which put the shepherds in great fear. Prepare and go. Good day, and welcome to Our Lady, Queen of Peace. We continue to celebrate this festive season of Christmas by honoring the Holy Family, Jesus' mother, Mary, and his foster father, Joseph, each trusted in the Lord when they accepted the unique start to their family. Though their family faced dangers from the start, they remained united in love. May our families share these bonds of love, enabling us to face the hardships and sorrow of life. Our presider today is Father Rich Litzow. Today's Mass is offered for families who have lost children to violence. Our gathering song is Once in Royal David City. We are so glad you're here. Thank you. 
Thank each of you for joining us. As we come together as the virtual community and the real presence of Christ in our world, we begin always in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the triune God be with each of you. And with your spirit. Standing in God's love, we also seek his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us sing to God's glory. Let us pray. O oh God, who was pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by his children 
and when he prays is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these things, put on love, that is, the bond of perfection, and let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you are also called into one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts to God, and whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father through him. The word of the Lord.
be with you. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the rise and fall of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There is also our prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She's advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped day and night with fasting and prayer. Coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. I always remind myself this time of year that I need to send the first reading from Sirach to my children. So when I get home today, I'm going to email them uh, a copy of this, because as Dr. Foley reminded me, although it is addressed to the sons, the daughters aren't off the hook either. So kids, pay attention. Not only my kids, but everybody else's kids as well. You know, we never really think about it much, but despite where we come from, whether we come from a great family, an awful family, or a mediocre family, good, bad, or indifferent, we sometimes are the product of our families. And so we are challenged sometimes about this time of year. I have four brothers and a sister, and uh, my sister and I were the middle children. So we kind of got, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, from all of us. When I was ordained, my mother took my older brothers aside and said, now that he's ordained, you have to treat him more respectfully. My two brothers looked at each other and looked at my mother and then looked at me and then, yeah, not so much. The reality of the Holy Family is that Joseph and Mary began their lives with this family by saying yes. Understanding that when they became parents, their life would be upended and things that they never expected to do, they would be called upon to do throughout their lives. That's pretty much the same with any family. Um, if you have been to higher education, you have gone to school for four years or eight years or 12 years, or some people go for 16 because they like school. And I would ask the parents, how long were you in school to be a parent? Usually the word is zero. So this idea of being a family is not something that you can practice. You learn on the move. You learn as you grow and face the challenges, as did Mary and Joseph. This final part of the gospel where they went down to uh, Nazareth, the child grew and became strong, 
filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. There's gaps in the story. He grew up, and then when they were, when he was about 12 or 13, they went to the temple as they were supposed to, and that was the year he ran away from home. Hung out at the temple, and mom and dad were like, where have you been? Don't you know you're supposed to keep track of us? And of course, you know, Jesus, being the son of God, said to mother, don't you know I should be about my father's business? And then again, at the end of that gospel, he went down and was subject to them and grew in wisdom. Another gap of 18 years where Jesus grew and became a man, lived the life of a good Jew in the first century, went to synagogue, learned a trade, learned things at the foot of his mother and at the side of his father. Again and again, we are shown through this process how in an ideal world, in a perfect world, families are. Not so, Martha, not so. We find challenges all the time. The point is that if we ground ourselves in God's love, then those challenges can be met through love, through patience. And so we do it. Sometimes we do it well, sometimes we do it not so well. But it serves us well to be reminded that it's important always to know that the example we have is the Holy Family. Mary, giving up a life that she was going to lead for the life that God asked her to lead. Joseph, taking on the responsibilities of a father and a husband because God asked him to, and leading the life that he was asked to lead. And then, of course, Jesus the child. I'm guessing that he was probably, at some times, he was probably a pretty normal kid. I was hearing confessions for some second graders one time, and I said, what do you suppose Jesus was like when he was your age? And this young man was, I think, 12. Do you suppose he sometimes didn't clean his room? And the kid said, probably not. So here we have a child, Jesus, growing up in wisdom and in strength, learning from Joseph and from Mary and from the people around him. We are called to do this. We are called to strive for that perfection in our lives. So for some people, the Feast of the Holy Family is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate family. For some people, it's an opportunity to stop and be thoughtful. But it's always an opportunity for us to remind ourselves that we are called to stand in God's love and that God never, ever abandons us. As a community of faith, let us stand and in one voice profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds in the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The favor of God was upon Jesus as he matured. We pray now that the favor of the Lord may be upon us as we give voice to the needs of us all. 
for the church that we treat our sisters and brothers with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience as we strive to build God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may respect the bond of individual families, as well as foster the unity of the human family across nations and cultures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents of babies, children, and teens, that they may exercise patience as they raise their children with love and kindness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and hope for parents who have lost a child, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Remember that God guided the Holy Family into Egypt, protected them from danger in their homeland. May we, as the body of Christ, receive immigrant families into this country for protection with just and humane treatment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That members of this community may reach out to those without immediate family and offer their love and time and give witness to the bond we share in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Warren Bull and Shirley Smith, May they enjoy eternal rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we look to the Holy Family for inspiration and support as we nurture the bonds of love that bind our families together. Listen to our needs and grant our prayers through the one whose coming we proclaim, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to our Almighty God. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. So with the angels and the archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory as without end, we acclaim. indeed holy to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst. We are gathered by his love, and when is once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that, may be, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son and our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of his resurrection, and we've seated at your right hand, we proclaim this work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and a chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that's been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, with all the bishops, the priests, the deacons, the entire people that you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and our sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people might be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead, 
whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, bring them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her chaste and holy spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. He is our Lord and our Redeemer, and he is our brother. Alive in our hearts, he teaches us to pray, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Three calendars featuring sacred art will be available in the gathering space beginning January 1st. We remain within the octave of Christmas, so I think it's okay for me to take a moment to offer Monsignor Ken and the staff's wishes for a peace-filled, joyful Christmas. Um, you are always in our prayers and thoughts, and thank you for joining us wherever you are and however you are. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each one of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This celebration is ended. Let us be in peace.